Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Carrie Robinson, the Executive Director of the National Leadership Roundtable on Church Management. Our mission is to promote best practices and excellence in the management, finances, and human resource development of the Catholic Church in the U.S. with a particular focus on utilizing the talents of the laity. We are comprised of clergy, religious, and laity, all of whom hold senior positions of executive leadership experience and responsibility, all of whom deeply love the church. In today's session, we will examine contemporary technology and communications. We will be exploring a new resource developed by the Leadership Roundtable to connect pastors across the country. And we will also delve deeply into effective means of communications to reach young adult Catholics. Our first guest is General Jim Dubeck, who has been a founding member of the Board of Trustees of the National Leadership Roundtable on Church Management. General Dubeck, you're an extraordinary leader, recently retired after 37 years serving the U.S. Army. On behalf of the Leadership Roundtable, you are helping to develop a resource for Catholic pastors, adapted after a very successful initiative at the level of the U.S. Army. Tell us about that project. Well, thanks, uh, Carrie. Uh, the Army's got a really uh, recognized, world-recognized uh, leadership development systems, not just one project. And in the Army, the, the selection for leaders is rigorous. We have a very uh, well-defined leadership doctrine. We have episodic education programs, so that as a person gets promoted, that person goes to a increased uh, schooling. And we've got a, a very well-defined uh, lessons learned process, so as you go on an operation, things that are learned get plugged into this and then passed to others. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, well recognized around the world as one of the best leader development models. But we knew in the late 90s that we were going to have to adapt this because it wasn't fast enough. Things were changing too quickly. Technology was changing too quickly. And so the senior leaders at the time asked ourselves, uh, how will we adapt our leader development model? Uh, then the war came along, and that made the requirement even uh, more important to learn faster. Uh, so while we're thinking about this, three junior officers got together and solved the problem for us. They, uh, they, they recognized that uh, as important as the learning was that they got while they were at school, the Army put on, that they learned from each other in many more important ways than that, uh, what they learned in formal schooling. They got together at barbecues, they got together on their front porches, they got together at socials and they asked questions of one another, they asked what worked, what didn't work, they shared these best practices, uh, they were able to uh, have extended conversations, and three of them then said, well, why can we put this online? And they did. So they created this thing called companycommander.com. It's an army a term, a commander commands 150 people. And online, they tapped into the community that already exists, they tapped into the desire to serve well, and they created this forum where they could share best practices, ask questions of one another, and uh, learn from one another at a rate that we never could have guessed possible uh, in the early part of the, of the 2000s. Fascinating. Explain how you have taken the findings and success of that model and adapted it for specific utility in the Catholic Church, specifically with pastors? Well, first, a community already exists. 
the community of pastors around the country uh, are a, a group of people who are absolutely dedicated to serving their parishioners, who have some great ideas, who have good practices in leading their, uh, their parishes, and there's a recognized need to share that and to learn from one another. So there wasn't a need to create a community. It was how to serve, how to get the technological tool to serve the community that already exists. So the round table pulled together uh, a small group of people late last year, and we called this the prototype group. It consisted actually of a couple members from the army who volunteered their services to uh, come help form this. Uh, then several uh, priests and a couple other lay leaders. And this prototype group met over a series of months, sometimes face to face, sometimes on telephone, sometimes other ways, and came to uh, conclude about three things. First, the initial focus, and we hope this project goes beyond pastors, but the initial focus would be on pastors. But the definition of pastors would be broad. It'd be pastors past, because there's a lot of contributions that former pastors can make to now younger pastors. It would include pastors present because these pastors are facing uh, very difficult situations and circumstances and have questions. Uh, in some cases, they've never done it before. In other cases, they serve multiple parishes and with, with differences among the parishes. It would also include pastors' future, uh, priests who think that they might become pastors. And last, the the large group of support priests who are there to help pastors. And so if we, the group thought, if we define pastors that large uh, in, in that expansive of a way, uh, we would create the, the community that exists would be one that could really be tapped into. Wonderful. Uh, second, and this is pretty exciting, the, the uh, prototype group decided to organize the web page around contemplation and action. And uh, they took on the contemplation side. They said, well, a priest can't serve unless his spiritual renewed, uh, renewed uh, regularly. And so under contemplation, there's uh, the, a retreat center on the web page where pastors and priests can share uh, things that help renew them. On the action side, they uh, decided on a series of categories called Keys to Confident Ministry. And these were uh, categories that uh, the, the group thought were pretty routinely uh, practiced in every parish, though they may differ parish to parish. So that was the second. And then the third uh, decision was th that whatever content would be on would have to be generated by pastors themselves. So it would be useful to them. It'd be practical advice. And uh, that kind of guided the prototype group following maybe four or five months of uh, prototype discussion, we hired the previous group, again, a group that helped the Army in forming it uh, uh, through a very generous grant of Catholic Extension Society. And uh, the group now has launched us into a pilot program. We've extended the number of priests that are on the site. Now we're into much more content, refining the, the site to make it easier to use. You can go on the site now, for example, and find some very practical guides on planning and organizing projects at the parish level, uh, decentralizing and leadership techniques. You can go on and find uh, uh, ways to get parish councils to work better together. Uh, you can find practical advice on group dynamics, not just theory, but how it, how it applies. And so the content is starting to expand. And we're ready, uh, I think, pretty soon to move from pilot to full production. And uh, so this is, this is a very exciting project that we think, uh, we know pastors will benefit from. I know there will be many pastors who will be eager to be part of this community. So, yeah, we hope so. thank you so much for developing that. Um, before you leave us, is there anything that you have learned over your career about leadership that you would like to suggest to church leaders at the parish level, pastors and church leaders, that would help encourage them? Well, I guess the one thing that, that, that I learned as I matured as a leader, uh, to recognize what I don't know, and to tap into the resources of those around me who are willing to help, in my case, subordinates, but of course, the subordinate uh, doesn't exist in, uh, in a Catholic parish, 
but tap into the expertise of others and let their expertise contribute to the common goals of parish life. That as a leader, when I was younger, I thought I had to have all the answers. And the more I led, the more I realized that was a flawed model. And the collaborative leadership, participative leadership, tapping into the resources of others uh, was a leadership skill that I had to develop and that I would recommend to, to any uh, cleric or, uh, or lay leader. Yeah. General Dubick, thank you so much for your service to our country and to our church and especially for your leadership at the Leadership Roundtable on Church Management. Oh, you're welcome. It's absolutely my pleasure. And now we have with us two exceptional young adults. Chris Solga, coordinator of ESTEEM, a young adult leadership project, and Mike O'Loughlin, communications officer for the Leadership Roundtable. Chris, let me begin with you. Tell us about ESTEEM. Thanks, Carrie. Um, ESTEEM stands for Engaging Students to Enliven the Ecclesial Mission, and it's a young adult leadership project to train the next generation of young adult leaders in the Catholic Church. And what it is, it's going to be a, a program, a training program at Catholic universities and universities across the country for, to, to train them to become the next, the next leaders. Um, what we have developed so far is um, a, a tentative curriculum. Um, we're going to partner them with mentors. We're going to do some, uh, some training with them. Um, we'll also have, uh, have a, a mentoring aspect with them. And they're going to be with leaders of the Catholic Church, with lay leaders. And it's just going to be a really, really uh, a great program that we have developed for the next generation. And in, in this program, do you equip them to serve on pastoral councils, diocesan finance councils, trustees of Catholic organizations? Is it along those lines? It is. The great thing about the program is that it's, it's, it's for the person's skills, it's for the person's talents, it's whatever they're talented in can be used towards the Catholic Church. So whether it's in development or fundraising or if it's in a volunteer capacity, whatever they're passionate about, whatever their skill set is, they can use it towards the Catholic Church and that's what we want to convey to them. How wonderful, what a great initiative. And who are the sponsoring partners of this organization? It's a collaborative effort between the Leadership Roundtable and St. Thomas More at Yale University. Terrific, well thank you for being with us. And I want to uh, segue to you, Mike. In your view, speaking of young adults and the future of the church, um, how is the church reaching young adults in their communications apostolate? And, and what could the church be doing to strengthen that? Sure. Uh, the church, like any organization today, faces a tremendous challenge in reaching its audience, especially young adults, uh, because of the context in which we find ourselves in terms of media and communications. At any given time, someone with a computer or uh, a smartphone can go online and have access to hundreds and uh, free magazines and newspaper articles, uh, thousands of blogs, free movies, documentaries, videos, and there's so much information coming at people from all around the web. So you have this challenge of how do you make your organization stand out? How do you get your message across? And this is true of all generations now, but young people especially who are just faced with this glut of information coming at them from all angles, all different uh, actors in society. And while that is a challenge for the church, uh, the church kind of has a leg up because what remains most important is content. And if there's not content on these uh, social media platforms, uh, users won't have, uh, won't have the desire to participate. So the church has the content. Uh, the church has its tradition, the scriptures, uh, our history, our, our saints, the church has great content. So the challenge that the church faces is getting that content onto the web, getting that content onto social media platforms. Um, and a great thing about the church is we have leaders who are already experimenting with the social media stuff and who are being successful with it. Uh, 
Well, let me ask you how the Leadership Roundtable is helping serve the church in this capacity. Sure. So uh, our last annual meeting in 2009, the Leadership Roundtable devoted our topic to effective church communications. And we were fortunate to hear addresses from Prime Minister Tony Blair and Bishop uh, Gerald Kakanis, uh, Vice President of the Catholic Bishops Conference in the United States. And both individuals told us about the need for content, uh, the importance of having uh, solid information to distribute, and the, how, how the church has to adapt to this new uh, media environment. The Leadership Roundtable, to celebrate this, uh, this meeting, we launched our own social media platform. So we were able to take these dynamic speeches and put them on YouTube during the meeting. So people could participate in the meeting who weren't able to join us in Philadelphia. We were using Twitter to get out real-time information to people following us on the web, um, highlighting uh, the remarks, talking about uh, what was happening at the conference. We used Facebook to uh, direct our members to news articles related to the Leadership Roundtable. Uh, we're able to use all these uh, social media platforms to engage our members, which is very important because they feel as though they're in touch with us and we're in touch with them regularly. And also, we're able to reach out to individuals and organizations who share our passion, uh, who share in our mission, and we can connect to various communities throughout the country, throughout the world, who want to share their ideas with us and we can share uh, our ideas with them. Well, and Chris, I can imagine that in the area of, of swiftly changing technology, this may be a perfect way to connect talented, faith-filled young adults in, ser in direct service to the church, um, helping equip and wire parishes to, to be more contemporary. Exactly. And, and what happens that really today is that there's a gap that exists between um, college-age kids that are really active in campus ministry while they're in school and then, you know, usually coming back to, to the church if they get married or some major life event. And so social media and networking is, gonna, is a great way to, to bring them back into the church and get them more involved right away or right out of campus. Oh, terrific. Um, let me ask you, uh, in the sphere of technology and the Internet, the Leadership Roundtable has collected from all across the country a set of best practices at uh, through parishes, dioceses, religious communities. Tell us about the online clearinghouse of best practices known as Churchopedia. Sure, so we have a website called churchopedia.org uh, where we invite church professionals from across the country to submit uh, practices that have worked in their dioceses and their parishes and nonprofits to share them with other church professionals who may be uh, encountering a similar problem in their workplace. And what we are able to do is connect uh, people from across the country who are uh, working in the same field and together they can address challenges. Uh, the more information that they give us, the more we can distribute to uh, users on the site. And it's a collaborative effort between users, uh, us, the website, and it's, it's really a dy uh, dynamic way to uh, kind of focus on problems and get them fixed more quickly with uh, more sets of eyes looking at them. Can you give an example of a best practice that may have been posted on Churchopedia that uh, is now available to other parishes or dioceses? Sure. So um, job descriptions. Uh, job descriptions are vital to uh, ensuring efficiency and productivity in any workplace. So what we've been able to do is uh, collect uh, exemplary job descriptions from various organizations, parishes, dioceses, nonprofits and post actual samples on the website. So if there's a pastor in California who needs to hire uh, an administrative position for his parish, he can go on to churchopedia.org, click on job descriptions, find an example from a Boston parish that worked well, that uh, the whole process was uh, worked well for the parish, and kind of use that model for his own search back in California. Um, so it's just a sharing of information that uh, is very accessible and easy to use. Terrific. What a resource. Um, well, you are, you are both actively engaged young adult Catholics and clearly in positions of, of importance and service to the church. Um, if you don't mind, may I ask, does that uh, opportunity allow you a deeper engagement in the life of the church itself from a personal faith standpoint? 
Chris? Um, I think it definitely does. You know, when I was, after I graduated from college, I was kind of struggling to find my way in the parish and just being a part of a really active community and then being part of my parish, I wasn't sure how I really fit in. And then this opportunity came along and now I really feel that I can not only help other young Catholics become a part of the Catholic Church, but also deepen my faith and, and reaffirm what I was doing. Wow. Sure. Uh, when I was looking for resources to kind of deepen my own spirituality, I was able to go online and find uh, communities online um, of people who shared my interests. Uh, there's examples of uh, bustedhalo.com, which is a website which really gets social media. Uh, there's video and blogs and podcasts and connecting with other young people who are searching uh, for these questions, uh, for answers to these questions. It's, uh, the web has been a a great tool for myself, and I'm fortunate to be a part of this uh, kind of ongoing experiment. Well, thank you both so much for your leadership and for being with us today. Thank you. For more information on best practices available to your parish, please visit our website, theleadershiproundtable.org, where you can also friend us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Carrie Robinson. Thanks so much for being with us.